Canberra Metalheads. The Archives. Me and you, Season 2. Alright, let's kick it. Okay, welcome to Canberra Metalhead. You got Marky Malpas, and I'm joined here with the guys from Zeolite. So, left to right, we got. I'm Fraser, I'm the vocalist. I am Frosty, and I play the bass guitar. Awesome. Uh, it's good to, uh, good to catch you guys here. We're recording this at the back of the basement um, in, the, uh, in the atmospheric surroundings. <laughs> uh, that's good, man. It's better than some of the green rooms I've been in, that's for sure. Yeah. No, it's been noted down as one of the better venues on some of the tours that yeah. have come through, so that's a, that's a tick. We've played some fucking dives, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah honestly, I can imagine. Like, you know, you're working your way up through like yeah. venues and stuff, and we're finally now at the point where you go from sort of playing those smaller rooms of like 100 capacity and stuff to then like getting to the point where you're you know, lucky enough to be on a tour like this and you start playing some really, really fucking cool venues and um, yep. we've seen that on this tour for sure. It's good. Yeah, that's good, man. It's good to when you, especially because I've um, had some communication with the booking agent and stuff like that yep. for this one yep. and it's just good to see that, you know, someone's on top of their game and smashing out like good good tours Yeah, and uh, booking venues appropriately and stuff. Yeah, man. And it's like, well, Frosty and I have both worked in like in and around bars and music for ages yep. and like you know a good venue when you see it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. You, even by the way that like, uh, by the way that like the staff interact with you from the first moment, yep. even yep. if it's like a really good facility it doesn't yeah. necessarily make it a good venue yeah, like yeah. the people make it as well so exactly like, you know did max watts for the first time and cam the guitar tech yep he used to work there and his mates were all and it's just like the best yeah because like everyone's so friendly and so nice it's really yeah. family oriented kind of attitude man. towards mm. everything it's, yep. um, very right. it makes the show that much sweeter mm. and it makes life so much easier for everyone involved yeah. on on either side of the show as well so it's always good to to get to a venue and know that the staff and you know everyone's on the same page yeah, no, that that's for sure, man. And uh, as well as like, the band feels more comfortable. Probably means that they're going to have more um, sort of natural feel to their set. Oh, for sure. As yeah. well, like yeah, I got here and there's a fucking dog running around, man. It was sick. You had this dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Playing fetch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like I've. Um, you definitely feel that when bands are more at ease, their set tends to go a little bit better as well. Yeah, like well, as no far tension, as it's, it's just easy. You yeah. know, you go on and play a show. Especially if you're in a tour, like you might have had to get up at five o'clock that morning <laughs> to get here. Like we've actually been pretty lucky. Like the guys from Black Dahlia and Aborted have like because they've got so much more gear than we do. Yeah, yeah. And like they're travelling with the techs and the sound guys, so they need to get to like a city at a certain time so the techs can get everything ready yep. whereas we're just like we don't even have to do a sound check on this tour <laughs> so we just roll in drop our gear it's like hey guys and they're all like bleary I'm like yeah man we have to leave that city until like 11 this <laughs> they're like oh we're all to here at 9 <laughs> yeah. yeah I can imagine man what, what's it like touring, touring like you all touring together you've been on um, the bills yeah, yeah. Before so, this, what's it yeah. like uh, going through with with some bigger bigger bands as well? Um, I mean, right. you guys have obviously toured before, but I mean, for example, yeah. Well, this this is the first time this band has done this kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this is my first band, but Frosty's you know he's been in what was it, your whole topsy and um, was it un 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 untruth yeah yep. I, yeah been in a few bands over the years yeah man yeah, yeah, done yeah, a little cool. bit of touring um, cool yeah but it's always fun though. you know I, I think the bigger ones like this probably easier oh absolutely because um, yep. they're so the organised like, yeah. you've got people like Dicey and Dave and they're yeah, just like yeah. they've done it all 2,000 times yeah, more yeah. and like yeah you don't have to think about anything because it's all just covered man so it's it's easy it's pretty stress free like when we do tours I generally book the shows and tour manage and stuff yep. and like you know because like you know you're a smaller band and stuff there's not the level of respect that these guys have garnered so there's some stressful situations but this is wicked I think the most stressful situation was like going to the first venue because I yep. was like worried about like the bands not being nice you know yeah. I mean? yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. like looking down the nose at you but it wasn't like that at all it yeah, was yeah. like super super nice um, it's all always really in your head when you're just sitting there going like oh man I don't like and then it all comes to, to light and you're like oh yeah. it's cool man oh yeah, yeah. and the uh, border guys especially have been like really really kind man like yep. they um they noticed a couple of niggles in pardon me um, a couple of niggles in our guitarist guitar tone and last night they were there like in our green room like helping oh, tweak right, tones man. and stuff like just the nicest dudes and the Dahlia guys I mean you know they've uh, they've come to Australia and now they're you know they're looking at going to New Zealand after this yeah and you know they're still energetic as shit like yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. fun and, and, and nice and you know 
it's all you can't ask for much more man yeah i can imagine um you got to keep that energy up and it's good it's refreshing to see it reciprocated mm. like for the other bands yeah and like dude just to hear them like helping you out and stuff like that yeah. that's that's super positive man mm. really really great yeah um and obviously like when you're touring together that's the kind of thing that like helps the whole thing out because like i've spoken to um some touring bands before and they're always saying like that's how you test out a band go on tour and mm. just see how you're all meshed together because yeah, it's essentially in a relationship really yeah well, you're like in each pretty... other's pocket for so much time man but yeah like i think it's that camaraderie thing like sort of what you touched on like bands like that i mean they've been around for what bordered like the 90s and stuff surely like 90s or 2000s yeah 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 it's like so they've been doing it forever and they've been in our position do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. like they've been at shows with like exactly. hard rooms and the, like you know, yep. your guitar tones aren't working or this doesn't work and that doesn't yeah, work yeah. And, yep. and you know they've, they've done it so much and you know you're just like standing there i mean just because you're like in a huge band doesn't mean you mean you're not like a person that hasn't experienced stuff yeah, before. yeah. just yep. stepped into this role and yeah. just been amazing at it straight away <laughs> um even though they are ridiculous yep. um but yeah like they obviously see like a little part of you know themselves and yeah. empathize with that and you know they're, they're nice people and just want to help so yeah i can imagine um seeing you guys it'd be refreshing to just be like oh i remember when we were like touring with bands and things like that yeah we're exactly right mm. i mean um you guys have been like you said you like you said before um in the scene for a while how long has the light been kicking for uh Real first show was like uh, Anzac Day weekend in 2014. Yep. Yeah, so about, what, four years? Mm. Four and a bit. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, so just been slogging away. Started off in Tassie as a Tassie-based band. Yep. Um, and then uh, a couple of members sort of uh, came in and out and we inherited <laughs> uh, Grant, <laughs> yep. our, our younger guitarist. Yep. Because he's just like really got amazing stage presence. And yep. he was based in Melbourne when we were based in Tasmania. Yeah, and then um, we had we've always had fill-in drummers for like the last two years as well. Mm-hmm. So they've come from wherever they do, and um, yeah. So now we're based. I'm still in Launceston, but I'm Launceston. Uh, you got bass in Melbourne, guitar in Melbourne, guitar in Melbourne, and drummer in Brisbane. Yep. So we're spread out. Yeah, cool. And, and you'll mesh together really well. So that that's good to see and tour tour together well. Yeah. Um, and you you're one of the original members. Is yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's uh, myself and um, Patrick are the guitarists, so the two sort of cool. founding members and and the two original members as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> and uh, how long you been in the band for me? Uh, so I've been playing with the Light about six, eight months now. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, a few tours few kind of nice one-off shows and stuff and yeah sort of test the waters and stuff because we obviously well I mean, we obviously knew we knew each other pretty well before yep. um before i started playing yeah um, so you like supported whore topsy a bunch when i was in that band and yep. uh, we always got along like an absolute house on fire the um, clark kent incident the clark kent incident yeah we <laughs> yeah so yeah we, we got along really well is there a story there that i'm not we can tell another yeah. <laughs> But nah, it's a that's cracker. Good. Um, nah, that's good to know. Yeah, got along really well, and, and you know these guys were were looking for someone to play bass, and um, at that time I don't think I was I was playing live uh, in a band, and I was you know yeah awesome. They're awesome dudes. The music's cool. Um, so yeah, got involved and, stuck and now around, we're involved. Now stuck around, or now we're involved. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, been good. Yeah, that's good to hear, man. That's when uh, someone comes into a band because obviously a lot of bands aren't the original lineups all the time yeah and it's cool to hear that someone can step into a band and hit it off yeah. like really well i mean obviously you've had the experience before but that's but the thing man like we've, we've been really lucky because we have toured around a little bit um and sort of like you know slogged it out doing that we've met some like first of all really talented people and yep. just some incredibly nice people mm. and when those two sort of elements cross over that's when you sort of get that spark in your mind it's like yeah like that's you know that's the person that I think would mesh well with the band yep. and it's like it's as you said it's it's not until that first tour or that first weekend yep. that you do yeah. that you really find out yeah um, but yeah like I don't know we've, we've had people in and out of the band um, and you know you have certain differences but like we've been really lucky I think for the majority of the time like I think uh, everything's been pretty amicable really yep. like um, the departure of our, our first drummer like I think it was more like a breakup than anything mm. um but like in saying that man like the last uh not the last tour the tour before that played in tassie he's yep. his other band like played with us and like still catch up with him and you know it's it's a you know it's easy it's good yeah no that's that's good to hear man and 
and um, like you said, you pretty much in a relationship. Like yeah. like I said before, we're pretty much in a relationship. Yeah. So like you said, when someone departs, it's nearly like a breakup because you oh, know, you, there's a lot of emotion involved yeah. as well as like metals are fairly emotional. Um, yeah, like, it's pretty charged. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. <laughs> like so, you've got all that as well on on the thing. Um, and obviously, like being a singer, you see this, this the presence of the crowd and things like that. Yeah. Um, how's it been as you've been travelling around? You notice much difference between different crowds and things like that? Or? Uh, I don't know. The Hobart crowd was a bit ludicrous. Um, yep. Simply just because I think because we're from Tasmania and like we've got a lot of friends down there. Yep. And I imagine Brisbane will be very similar. But all the shows, like it's just been really positive, man. Like The reception's been great. Um, we didn't think it was going to be... You know, as, as the, the situation where people came out as early to see us play and stuff is what it... Pardon me. Sorry, I've got a really bad reflux at the moment. Um, <laughs> there we go, a little pat on the back. That'll yeah. fix me right up. See, Cheers, look, Dad. we're experiencing the brothership right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like, yeah, people have been coming out early and getting into it and then, like, yep. you know, and then come over and grab some merch and stuff. It's all been, like, honestly, with this whole tour from getting the offer to playing the shows, I could not ask for anything more. It's been, yeah, great. Yeah, Brad. That, yeah, it's good to hear, man. Uh, good to hear that you're having fun with the tour. And yeah. uh, and we are t- talking earlier off mic um, that you guys sold our CDs already. So, yeah. like, smashing smashing out some merch as yeah, well. it helps, yes. man. It really does. So, yeah, we are saying, uh, like, after the tour that what's left will go up online. Yeah, so, so we, we were getting pretty... We, we did a big run of merch before the tour began. Yep. And uh, the first three shows in particular were really good sellers. So we... Yep. Uh, we pretty much had to put in an order for a reprint of a couple of the shirt designs okay. and then at, you know during a three hour airport layover yep. one of us went out picked it up brought it back <laughs> uh, so we had you know merch for the next night kind of thing yeah nice uh, but yeah after the tour anything left over and CDs that we unfortunately didn't bring enough of yeah. will yep. be available online um, yeah. so yeah we're also, if you're at the Hobart work. show and you stole T-shirts from us, yeah. I will hunt you, I will find you, and I will give you a real stern telling off because I'm not a super physically violent person, but like, <laughs> I'm really unimpressed. You Must stole fun. stole from us, and that's not cool. Yeah, that's not cool, man. Whoever did that, um, you're in the naughty corner. That's right. That's yeah. That's not how you make friends. That's just a weird premise, man. It's not even. It's, like, it's not the fact that it's like, it, you know, like printing T-shirts doesn't really cost heaps of money um it's the principle of it you know like we could have sold those t-shirts you know the price point of them was like 25 bucks or whatever yeah yeah and even that's not it it's the principle it's the fact that they've like paid to go and see a band and they've like wanted the t-shirt they've wanted to support the band but, but they, they don't want to pay, pay for it do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like so yeah that, 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 that sucks that whoever did that them. like i hope you're not a fan of the show yeah but if you are if you are <laughs> listening <laughs> In fact, I hope, like, I hope you actually, I hope you bought, like, I hope you stole them out of spite. Yeah. I hope you burnt them, because I don't want you wearing the t-shirt after you stole them. <laughs> How about this? Make it back. Go on to their uh, website and buy all their remaining stuff. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure on our band camp, you can buy something, you can pay extra. So extra if you wanted to, you go and pick up a CD and then just, like, tack on maybe like five or six shirts <laughs> worth of money on top of that and we'll no be, questions asked yeah, if that yeah, comes we'll through we'll see the name come through and I'll send you a message being like thank you for unbecoming a shitty person <laughs> it's not often you get an opportunity yeah, yeah, like yeah. that repent <laughs> <laughs> yeah man well I, I can vouch for the designs man I just got the nun design shirt off you guys and that's like one of the coolest designs I've seen on a bloody yeah. band shirt man it's insane it's nasty. Man. She's like, a nasty bitch. We, uh, <laughs> we, um, we sort of wanted to like get into the vibe of the the whole Terrorvision element of the. Yeah, you know, yeah. Those guys put out that new album like literally the first show. Yep. Yeah. Um, and so we got that Freddy, um, Freddy Krueger T-shirt yeah, done yeah. with the television, like that yep. scene from Dream Warriors. Yeah, yep. I'm a massive Elm Street fan. Oh, dude, the metal scene just loves anything. Exactly. Called, like exactly. So we did that, and I was like, I, I was dead set. I'm like, that shirt is gonna be the one. Yep. And it sold really well, but that nun man. Yeah, sold real good. That's actually, that's a revamped old design that we did. We had it printed in grey instead of white. Yep. Uh, that was like one of the first t-shirts we ever did. Yeah. And it was like, I was on hoodies as well. Yep. Um, I actually picked one of those up the first night. Of the yeah, video, exactly. So, yeah. so we just like, we just got our new logo put on it. Yep. Um, instead of the old one. And yeah, it did a reprint, but it looks heaps more crisp in that white, man. Yeah, man. No, that yeah. looks sick. I'm, um, I'm excited to wear that one. I might even, uh, might even slip that one on just over before. the weekend. Oh. 
the um, but yeah. Anyway, no, it's uh, it's cool to see some good product and good merch, and uh, and also um, just to wrap that side of things up. Um, by the time you listen to this, it'll be a good time to head over to their website and see if they've got any of the um, any of the merch there, uh, which will sell out quickly by the sounds of it. So I hope so, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it should be good. So you can go to um, what is it? Zealight dot bandcamp dot com yeah and you can uh, listen to our music there and you can buy products and you can I think you can send us messages and stuff or whatever if you want yeah to. sweet yeah. we'll um we'll chuck a link in the um in the um Facebook post for that oh, one legend. as well so awesome. thanks man um, it. but yeah no it's rad to, rad to see you boys out here and uh, I mean I've been cranking your music um, throughout the day just sort of oh, yeah. prepping up for it and things like that Sick. just cool, cranking some uh, you guys are on Spotify as well yeah, I mean yeah. I always encourage people to buy albums yeah. but uh you know, while I'm sitting at work, it's yeah. uh, it's easy to just cruise through it on my phone. Spotify is just easy, man. Like, and it's a I feel like it's a necessary evil. It's um, you know, if you want people to be able to listen to your music so readily, because yeah. it's just everyone's moving to a streaming platform. It's just how yeah. it is. So just go with the flow. Yeah. And hopefully, um, I think there was like a big uh, big thing. Parliament put out like a suggestions thing, didn't they? Yeah. Like of how like we can change like the live music yeah, industry. Yeah. I think a big point that people pushed with that was you know changing how streaming is structured because it's like we get paid like 0.001 cent a play on Spotify yeah right and like you know once you rack up some plays and stuff it's like not horrible but like it's still like it's not I feel you know what you deserve like it's hard like, yeah it's, hard. It, it's tough man and especially YouTube change their things like yeah. you, unless it's something like stupid like unless you get like 36 hours Yep. of playtime on YouTube a week you can't yeah, right. even get royalties okay so, yeah I haven't looked too much into that just obviously being um, we our platforms that we use aren't yeah. sort of um, just a filthy casual yeah just exactly <laughs> just a promiscuous <laughs> like iTunes streamer um <laughs> A promiscuous iTunes screen. <laughs> wow. Um, some good lines going yeah. for, for now, but uh, like who, who knows? I mean... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, if YouTube's out there listening, still hit me up. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> But, yeah, um... Like, and if yeah, anyone we, on YouTube wants to fake 36 hours of fucking playtime on yeah, yeah. like... I'm, a, I'm, nuts. A, yeah. I'm happy to uh, quickly do the math there and just know <laughs> that I've probably contributed to about 00... zero 20 cents to you. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> so, and, and we appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> but, um... You know, it's good, good to see you guys out. And speaking of music, uh, we usually, um... We usually wrap it up with a with a song. Do you guys have a, have a favourite song that we that we could play after the interview? Of our own, of your own, yeah. Um, oh man, the the, the favourite that I've got at the moment is like the one that we open with, but yeah, it's not recorded. Too. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah we we open our set with two song, two new songs at the moment. Okay. But um, I don't know. I guess like uh, the one that we've got like out as a music video is Ruination, but I think my favourite is uh, Plutocracy. Okay. Which is uh, what the last track? Second last. Second last track. Yeah. Okay. Don't even know the run track, run time, run so, list even. Of I gotcha. I'm so yeah. tired. Oh man, <laughs> it, it's cool. Like I've seen bands um, play here. Obviously, not on the same scale as you guys. Yeah. Uh, more local bands and stuff. Yeah. That like their set list will just they'll go over to their merch, grab one of their CDs, come over and just flip it over and just. Sit I was playing through the yeah, yeah. That's what we actually did, man. When we did our um, our EP tour. We just played the EP, start to finish, and then I whacked on two old tracks. Yeah. Because the way the EP is written, it's um, there's heaps of flow to it. Yeah. Like, and there's like ambient stuff in between tracks and stuff. Yeah. Um, it just seems to flow. Well, we feel like it seems to flow quite well. Um, but we wanted to change it up for this because like you're playing with you know Black Dahlia and Aborted. Yep. And they're just like pretty vicious, ruthless kind of bands, and we just wanted to like instead of having like a big um, big build up into like what we're playing, we just want to just go bang bang and just hit it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's cool. Like, no, I, like I said, I was listening to your stuff today, and you got some good heavy hitting stuff in there. So I'm keen to surround this interview with some uh, some of your tracks. Oh, Six, awesome, yeah, man. Um, but yeah, where the got the sound test coming in now over the yeah, top it's of us. So. Smash this uh, this little podcast to pieces. Yeah. So uh, th- thanks very much for coming on, guys. And, oh, dude, um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And man. you know, it seems a little rushed at the moment, just in the back room. But like, I'm always happy to ha- have a chat and you know oh, learn dude. more about. And I've learned a lot more about the band as well as just had a mad chat with you guys. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, dude, next time. Well, this is the first time we've been to Canberra. So next time we come to Canberra, we'll definitely hit you up. Yeah, hit Let you know. And we'll free and, By free then, again. we might even have a more permanent establishment for yeah. this sort 
sort of stuff. Uh, we do have a stu- studio in the city. Yeah. Um, uh, but this is like so perfect for yeah, like, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. I, I love doing like, this stuff, but yeah. what what I mean is maybe a little more soundproof area yeah, where we yeah. can do this sort of thing. But that's always. Oh, uh, don't cards. worry. I'll just go out there and tell Black Dahlia to not. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man. I, I, it always helps having a little bit of atmosphere to it anyway. Yeah, so th- it. thanks for coming on the show. and yeah, um, Legend. Here on Canberra Metalheads. Woo! Thank you very much, boys. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. I'm Fraser. And I am Frosty. We're from Zealite, and you're listening to Canberra Metalheads. Yucca! Yucca! Bam! <laughs>